The greatest League of Legends player in the world is being held back by his wrist. We're gonna tell you exactly what Faker needs to do to avoid retirement from his injury. We wanna provide our thoughts based on what we feel to be a lot of misconceptions about gaming injuries and recovery. We're physical therapists who've been working in professional esports for a combined 10 plus years. We work with most of the teams here in the LCS and have worked with some of the best in the world across every major esport title. Players like Doublelift, Jojo Pune, Benji Fishy, Alish, Scream, Kenny, Divide, Jensen, etc. We've also collectively treated 2,500 plus cases of gaming injuries. Let's start by reviewing an overall timeline of Faker's wrist injury reports and what we know. Faker, one of the most renowned League of Legends players, has been experiencing significant wrist problems since May of 2023, which have impacted his performance. The issue was first noticed by fans due to his subpar play during the tournament season. T1 his team confirmed his need for a break from competitive play on June 5th, 2023, right before a match against DRX. Faker himself mentioned his arm condition during a media conference, particularly after a loss to Nongshim Red Force. On August 2nd in the 2023 LCK Summer Split, T1 defeated Quang Dong 2-0 and put an end to their losing streak. And during the press conference, Faker discussed his ongoing wrist injury, stating that it is not fully cured and he is still receiving treatment. He explained that the symptoms are difficult to resolve quickly and require long-term care. To manage his condition, Faker is adapting by changing his posture and gaming routine to minimize nerve impact. He emphasized that this adaptation process involves getting used to the symptoms and finding a balance that doesn't affect his performance. He stated despite the injury, he is working hard to improve and hopes to perform well in the upcoming playoffs. In November of 2023, Faker's doctor recorded a video and he described how his wrist injury became well known in July due to his slow recovery. Faker sought treatment at the doctor's clinic, where he improved significantly. Before the Asian Games, his doctor said Faker reported feeling 95% recovered. In January of 2024, Faker appeared on the South Korean show Knowing Bros, where he was asked about his injury, and he denied having carpal tunnel, but instead stated that he has cubital tunnel syndrome. In May of 2024, after their win against G2, an interview with Dexerto came out. It was revealed Faker had to change his mindset and approach for his games around the time of his injury. He also confirms his injury is not completely resolved and he is looking for ways to feel better. During MSI, there were concerns about his ongoing wrist issues from fans due to the observations such as his wrist shaking after a game against G2, suggesting he may still be struggling. Fans worry that he might be hiding the extent of his injury to continue competing, especially with major tournaments approaching, and fans suggesting that he should rest until fully healed. Tendons are the most commonly involved tissue in gaming injuries. Nerve-related issues are also common, however, rarely involve carpal tunnel syndrome, typically less than 1% of cases that we've seen. Instead, ulnar nerve irritation from cubital tunnel or guillons or thoracic outlet syndrome seem to have higher incidence based on our own case experience. And it's unclear to what extent Faker is dealing with tendon, nerve, and postural ergonomic issues, but fortunately, all can be resolved completely if treated appropriately and without surgery. 99% of injuries actually caused by gaming, a non-traumatic mechanism of injury, do not need surgery. This is because there's a predictable cause of the pain, which is typically higher actions per minute. For the tendon specifically though, it's an under preparation issue. Not having enough capacity or muscular endurance or low tolerance to handle the stress of gaming for a certain amount, duration, or intensity over a period of time. For nerves, it's entrapment of the nerve relating to a posture or specific positioning. It's typically not an issue earlier in a career. However, with prolonged years of general physical inactivity and a sedentary lifestyle, the risk of nerve irritation increases, most commonly at the shoulder and neck thoracic outlet syndrome, or the inner elbow in cubital tunnel, and much less the pinky side of the hand, Guillain's canal. Treatment usually involves addressing this underlying cause and being respectful of the specific tissue's behavior to recovery. For tendons, they respond positively to progressive loading, while nerves need to remove the compressive stress to initiate recovery. Nerves typically heal at a rate of one millimeter per day. The further the compression is from the hand and the more severe the injury is from chronic stress without appropriately addressing the compression, the longer the healing time. But there's no doubt it can achieve 100%. Injuries can be complicated as they do not just involve neuromuscular drivers of pain. There are contextual and cognitive emotional factors to consider. 
What do they believe about their pain or injury? What are their coping strategies with their current stressors in life and profession? What are their expectations of injury or recovery? Is there high job stress? Is there a demanding training schedule? Clearly, as one of the most well-known esports athletes in the world, in the LCK known to have more potentially demanding training regimens, increased preparation demands around international events, and the potential for traditional medicine not providing esports informed approaches to treatment, education, and intervention. These factors cannot be ignored. And we want everyone to recognize that whatever Faker is dealing with from the physiologic perspective, his recovery is unique, considerate of these very real environmental and personal factors. Before we go on, I did want to touch back on the recent Dexerto interview with Faker. Having to change his mindset and approach around the same time as his injury may not just be coincidental. Having any injury limiting your ability to perform at your best can absolutely lead to a change in mindset. However, as we mentioned above, he also has additional expectations and unique personal factors that might increase his overall pressures to perform, which have been shown to lead to increases in pain. There is a lot in the pain science literature about this and is not the scope of this overall discussion or thread. We've discussed this before in a YouTube video you can check out here. Another really important factor here is what he believes about his injury. From my experience, there have been roughly 10% of cases that we have seen over the past eight years, and fortunately this number has been growing, in which physicians have been able to provide a thorough, holistic, up-to-date education on an injury associated with gaming. And this means really just dedicating the time to fully understand the demands of that individual, educating the gamer appropriately about the expectations for recovery based on what we know and what our team, 1HP, has been publishing over the past few years. Most of the time, these physicians only focus on stretching and don't actually address the underlying cause, which again, most of the time is muscular endurance or improving the capacity of the tissues to handle the repeated stress of gaming over time. So how does Faker avoid retirement? Faker would benefit from a multidisciplinary team of professionals to provide support to address not only the nociceptive or nervous system drivers of pain, but also the environmental and personal factors that I mentioned. The true reality of professional esports is that sometimes only a certain amount of deloading can occur during competition time. If nerves are involved, it means a postural and ergonomic change may be indicated, which can affect the player's confidence or motor patterns which means the staff has to work closely with the esports organization, navigate the team politics to ensure that he's provided with the best possible treatment or modification of that posture at the right time, typically the off season. What this might look like in practice is number one, a physio who understands esports, who's familiar with cognitive behavioral therapy, us, who can work closely to address the cognitive, emotional, and physiologic factors, complementing or collaborating with a sports psychologist to provide interventions to address any of those thought viruses or potential harmful beliefs around injuries and navigate the unique stressors of Faker's individual profile. That combined team has to coordinate regularly with the esports organization, coaching, and team staff to make the appropriate modifications and medically informed decisions about day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week modifications to training. So number four, gradual progression physiologically and gradual work towards addressing beliefs and developing appropriate coping strategies. Based on what Faker has revealed in the past, let's talk about the most likely issues that Faker is dealing with now and the most effective treatments. The first issue Faker may be dealing with is tendon irritation of the flexor tendons, also known as tendonitis. This issue is caused by high actions per minute, in this case with the mouse, and low endurance of the wrist flexor muscles. The wrist flexor muscles start at the elbow and run down through the wrist into the fingers and are responsible for movements like finger flexion to press mouse keys and side to side movements to move the mouse. So it's understandable how Faker could have easily developed a repetitive stress injury of this muscle group. If you are dealing with tendon pain in your wrists, we highly recommend checking out our free wrist pain guides linked below. Faker confirmed he is dealing with cubital tunnel syndrome. Cubital tunnel syndrome is often associated with flexor tendinopathy due to the location of the nerves that pass under the flexor tendons, which often get tight as a result of irritation. Cubital tunnel syndrome, to be more specific, is caused when the ulnar nerve becomes pinched as it goes around the corner of the elbow. 
This can be caused by tight tendons, as I just mentioned, genetic anatomical abnormalities, this is less likely in this case due to him developing these problems later in life, or poor ergonomics, causing him to pinch the nerve. Often in gamers, this has to do with the edge of the desk compressing the nerves. Faker does not compress the ulnar nerve near the elbow, and his anchored wrist posture has not changed in years, so this is unlikely the cause of entrapment, which means the most likely source of the impingement is the tight wrist flexors. Thoracic outlet syndrome can sometimes be misdiagnosed as cubital or carpal tunnel syndromes. Faker does present with rounded shoulders and forward head posture, which contributes to nerve compression at the thoracic outlet. This is the area between the neck and the shoulder. And when this postural imbalance is seen in the scalene or pec minor muscles, they can entrap any of the nerves, arteries, or veins that travel down into the arm. This can cause pain, numbness, tingling, and even swelling throughout the arm and even into the hand. Without a thorough assessment of Faker in person, we can't know exactly what musculoskeletal impairments he is dealing with currently. However, we have seen hundreds of cases similar to how he has presented in the past at the professional and semi-professional level. With our experience, and assuming the context clues we have, to indicate the diagnoses we just mentioned, a treatment plan would look something like this. The first issue we would want to address is the flexor tendonitis and subsequent ulnar nerve impingements. My primary strategy would be to increase the endurance of the wrist flexors to handle the high APMs of competitive play. Think about it like building up his HP bar to handle the repetitive strain. First we would start Faker with some wrist flexor exercises to improve the endurance of those muscles. In a majority of the cases we have seen, there have been some endurance deficits leading to the muscles tightening up and causing some potential entrapments. We will also include stretching to increase the muscle length of the irritated tendons and utilize wrist flexor isometrics for pain management. We would use a dumbbell to prescribe wrist curls to failure with a metronome set to 50 beats per minute. Ulnar nerve glide exercises will be helpful to ensure that his nerve is able to slide freely all the way from the neck down into the fingers without being entrapped. We would then check his ergonomic setup to ensure the contact point of the armrest was more on his forearm than his elbow. This would avoid irritating the ulnar nerve and causing symptoms. The third issue we would address is his posture, which could be contributing to the case of thoracic outlet syndrome. We would start by prescribing exercises designed to improve the endurance of his postural stability muscles for the neck and upper back, such as rows, face pulls, T's, Y's, I's, and cervical retraction exercises. Additionally, we would include some stretches for the chest musculature and neck muscles, which get tight as a result of poor postural stability.